the end of a very long day, but I thought I'd just do a quick video before I went to bed. Um, I just got my revolver blued and put together today. I got it back from bluing yesterday and uh, went through it today in class, did a trigger job. And I also completed my indicator holder, so I just wanted to show those two projects. I still got a lot to do, and all this stuff is 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 uh is due by this Tuesday. It's now Saturday, at 2 a.m., and uh, I'm about to go to hit the sack. But um, it's gonna be a long weekend. But at least some of these things are getting done, so it gives me a little more uh, gives me a little more energy. Um, as you've already seen the PPC revolver, I guess I'll start with that. Uh, I just got it back from bluing. I didn't like the uh, the back sight, so. I guess I'm calling this completed for now kind of thing. But uh, as you can see, it's, I took it out. I mean, I took it out for bluing and I didn't put it back because I think it looks better this way. I understand the reasoning behind it. You want a longer sight radius because this is a competition revolver. However, I, uh, I like it better like this. And I don't know if that, if that extra inch back there really makes that much of a difference, especially since um, I do like it a lot, um, a lot better this way. Um, right now I'm soaking in oil. So if some of these streaks, some of these streaks are... Um, just some of the gun oil on it. Uh, at some point, I'm going to re-blue it because right now it's it's about factory blue, like what you would get from a new Smith and Wesson revolver. However, it's not custom blue yet. Um, but I, you know, I think overall it came out pretty nice. I'm 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 very happy with it, and I'm really excited to go uh, to go shoot it um, when I get back next semester. And it's it's going to be mostly double action. So and you can dry fire these. It's not not that big a deal. Um, this was actually an or originally a five screw one, which is, I think they stopped making those in the 40s, someone was telling me. Uh, and I wouldn't have touched it except someone had already worked on this. So that's the reason I had, I decided to, you know, I didn't feel any guilt, I guess, taking apart an original Smith, a nice old one. Um, but like I said, I, I didn't like that back there. So next semester, at some point, I will be uh, remachining this out and making the same kind of a site, but it's going to end here. And so look a little nicer. Just haven't had time to do it. This is pretty much done. I just have to button up one thing on the inside. Um, the person who had, I had bought this from had already worked on it, and he had removed one of the safeties. And you know he did it for lightening the trigger pull, but you never want to do that because if any accident happens, you're going to be liable because you disabled the safety. Um, this is my indicator holder. I just finished making it today. It's right now. It's just file finished. It's got to be polished. But right now, I've just got it to a file finish. And I've taken a file and just taken it down to the proper dimensions. Um, and I'll be uh, polishing that this weekend. The handle, the way this worked is they give you the, uh, the drawing for this uh, with all different dimensions on it. And that's how you're going to get graded. They, they uh, measure everything and make sure it's within spec up to five. And you have about 5,000 leeway either way. Either 5,000th 5, 5, of an inch too big or 5,000th of an inch too small. And what the, the way this works is um, we use a lathe. Um, we, we use mills and lathes in what we do. All right, currently I only have one set screw. I have to go get another one. I just, uh, at this point, I just didn't, I didn't pick one up. But you stick this in here. You've, you, we did a fly cut in here that matched the radius. You measure this and you, you cut the, it to that radius. And this goes in right here, like so. Oops. Oops. I just realized that side's a little low. Oh, well. Um, you screw that in. I'll have to take that out with a file, just deepen it a little bit. But you screw that in right there. And then this attaches to the bottom of your lathe. And the only thing that we were given leeway for in this in this uh, project was, in fact, the um, the handle. Because that's actually, he was encouraging us to make our own design. So this is what I came up with. After all, I'm going to be a gunsmith, and this is going to be an indicator for a gunsmith lathe. But well, basically, the lathe, the track is um, has like a little divot on top of it that ride that uh, it rides in, and you hook it on top, boom, and you um, lock it in place. And I made mine a little long because we have two different size lathes, so that you can use this on either one. And uh, into the place, this actually turns as well, so it goes up and down. It's got a brass tip raised on so that it won't damage any of the it won't damage the lathe because. Brass is softer than steel, and so when it does clip on, uh, it won't it won't do that. And you just clip, clip click on here. I have a set screw here, and you just tighten it down in place. And what that does, the reason you want this is um, when you're doing um, precision machine work, you want to be measure thousandths of an inch or even half thousandths of an inch. 
And then what this does is it clamps onto the track of the ra of the um, lathe, and as it gets closer, it actually starts measuring how how much of an inch. So if you say three thousandths, you you only want it to move that. You see how little that is, how little movement that is. And um, so if you have precision machine work to do, and you need to lathe to move in move in a certain amount, this will actually ride on ride on the rail and. As the lathe comes closer, it will let you measure. And currently, we have uh, magnets that do that. We have a mag magnetic holder, but this is a better system because it's a, it's a, it's actually a mechanical holding system. And sometimes the uh, magnetic stuff tends to tends to um, slip when it gets, especially when you're using some oil and stuff when you're on cutting. And uh, when you're dealing with such small amounts, thousandths of an inch, it does matter. Anyway, I hope you like it. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the way it came out. Um, and like I said, I can't wait to go shoot it. Um, I really like the heft. I mean, these are heavy just to, for, by design, but um, with all the slabbing and everything, it's actually not too bad. It points really well. And uh, I'll show more videos, I guess, of stuff that I'm doing in the next couple days. I mean, it's it's only you know everything's due by set, everything's due by Tuesday, so I will uh, hopefully have everything done by then. And uh, oh, uh, the handle. I don't think I explained this. Handle is actually a uh, seven millimeter casing that I uh, stuck onto the end of this, and um, just turned the inside of the the end of the rod down to the inside diameter of this, and stuck it on. It's so it's soldered on there, and then turned on a lathe to be smooth. And that would that's just a handle. It's decorative. I mean, you need some kind of handle. Some people narrow it, but you know, for what you're using this for, you don't need a lot. You know, it's not going to be a lot of pressure. So I th I went with more of a decorative handle anyway. And and I'm a gunsmith, so. It's kind of, oh, I'm going to be gunsmith. So it's kind of nice having just uh, something that looks like it belongs on a gunsmith's lathe. Anyway, uh, if you have any other questions, um, let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm just, it's really late and I got I to gotta get to sleep. Okay.